Hey, as promised, I got Shannon Waller back. And I'm going to repeat this again because it's very important for you to be aware um, that she's a passionate expert on entrepreneurial teams with strategic coach, a coach, author, and a podcast host of the Team Success Podcast. Last week, we were talking about the states of mind in DBT, the dialectical behavioral therapy, uh, the construct of the wise mind. Let's take two circles, left hand, reasonable mind which is your cool, rational, task-focused mind. And your emotional mind, your right hand, is your emotion mind, which is hot, mood-dependent, and uh, emotion-focused. But if you put, blend them together and just have two parts of the circles overlap, that piece in the middle that's overlapping is what they call the wise mind that helps you find the middle path. It's the wisdom with each person who uses their rational and emotional mind in an effective way. And they see the value of both reason and emotion. Uh, we had a lot of great points, body awareness. Uh, I can repeat the whole thing, but I would really like you to go back and listen to it again. And I'll have that link in the show notes for you. Um, but the next step here, I think, is going to be really great. I think this is going to blow both of our minds, is that another part, I, I discovered this a, a, couple a couple of days after I talked to Shen originally in the Mindfulness Handout book. Now, this is to make the states of mind, the wise mind, skillful, how do we do that? How do we balance that? So now the rational mind, let's consider that the doing mind, your discriminating mind, your ambitious mind, your goal oriented mind. You view your thoughts as facts about the world and you're focused on problem solving and achieving goals. So now your emotion mind is now your being mind, curious mind, your nothing to do mind, present oriented. Uh -huh. And when you're there, you view your thoughts, like uh, this is key here. You view your thoughts as sensations of the mind. You are focused on the uniqueness of each moment, letting go of focusing on goals. Now, again, two circles overlap. We got a wise mind, but now it's a balance of doing and being, which I think is a big challenge for most entrepreneurs and like most people in the world, but being. And that's the middle path where you enhance your awareness while engaging in activities. And you had a good little phrase off camera here. I think you said it was have the intention, but not the attachment. Right. Well, what, what I was relating this to Andre, and thank you for having me back is that. Oh yeah. You know, welcome again. <laughs> <laughs> we can pass those. Mom, skip by those. Uh, so what I've noticed is like, it's interesting because so much of the being is what most spiritual masters have recommended, right? You just stay in the present and you, and you, um, very present oriented. There's nothing to do. You're just openly curious and accepting and all the things, but then people who are in business have their own businesses. They're like, uh, no, I, I need to get some stuff done. Thank you very much. But I, what I related to you, it to, and to my mind, it's Zen. It could be Buddhist. Mm -hmm. It could be something. Is you have the intention, but you have no attachment, which is really yeah. interesting. And, I need and you. Again, can you expand on the attachment part? Absolutely. Yeah. So you have you have the intent. You have what you want. You set a you set a goal. You set a desire. But then you release your emotional attachment to it. It's a little bit like, okay, so you want a home somewhere, you want a particular achievement, an amount of money, a connection, who knows what it is. It doesn't always have to be a thing, but you get the idea. And then you kind of put it out there, you hold it in your mind, but you're not emotionally attached. So it, it, it gets a little bit detached from, this is how I understand it, from that driving, uh, almost scarcity, having yep. to work really hard, shutting off everything else, being completely single focused, you actually kind of invite the world, the universe, divine, whatever, to help you accomplish it. So you don't actually know how it's going to happen, which for control freaks is really challenging. <laughs> Yeah, which is most of us who's listening. Which is most of us, especially <laughs> if you own your own business or you're entrepreneurial. Um, it's challenging to have to let other things contribute. Now, I learned this through our whole concept of unique ability teamwork and all the things. Is if I just if I put something out there and let people know about it, there's a lot of people that want to contribute to that particular end. Uh, but you don't have to have the whole path figured out and decided for to be able to accomplish what you want. So that's how I've kind of used it in my own life. Am I very practiced at it from this standpoint? Nope. 
Uh, do I find it intriguing? Yes, I do. And when I, and oftentimes what you get is even much bigger or, or more what you wanted. You didn't even know it, which mm -hmm. is kind of fun. So it's, it's fun when you're kind of co-creating with the universe to, to make things happen. But I have to tell you, it takes that not attachment, not easy, <laughs> especially if you're used to being, you know, if, if you're very strong, independent minded, you're in charge of you, all the things, that's a very different mindset. Well, the key to you, what you said was actually, it was the emotional attachment that you have to disconnect. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of us probably don't, are not aware or realize that our attachment has more to do with emotions, but we actually convince ourselves it's the logical, reasonable part because I can't let it go because I can make more money. But, but honestly, it's, the attachment is emotional for other more notoriety or more fulfillment yeah. and yeah. and it's amazing through all this process of and i've been going through the last few years is my god how emotions from the past the present and what might be perceived to be future really plays with your logical reasoning mm -hmm. or what you perceive so when i saw this reasonable mind as being the doing mind and then the emotional mind being the being mind really hit me hard because the being you have no choice but to be present to do that and to check your emotions like we talked about the last episode being aware of your body like you can't be aware of anything if you're not present in the now how am i feeling yeah 100 percent. and and that's it to be present is most people's challenge right because we're we're projecting things into the future which may or may not be based on reality and we're or we're rehashing the past somehow and we're not actually tuned into what's happening right now mm -hmm. and it was there was a, a comment that you made that just reminded me of some phenomenal coaching and training that we were doing um at strategic coach on monday and that talked about when you are really attached into your core motivation when you're in best self mm -hmm. that's your soul that's that's kind of what you're ah, here to help do. Soul. I know. And then you're, when you get triggered and you're in the quote unquote shadow self, to use a Jungian term, mm -hmm. um, that would be your ego. So it's interesting staying out of our ego reactions. And, and this is what Deborah Levine, who's this co-creator of this awesome profile called The Why of You print, uh, is she said, it's almost always a trigger from your past. Oh, it's, it's 100%. <laughs> some unresolved issue now these days they call it trauma it can be a micro trauma who knows apparently we all have them where some you you experienced an, a, an event you had an emotional response to it which probably at that point you didn't have a full perspective on how to handle mm -hmm. and then it gets a little bit imprinted in your body usually and then fast forward it could be 5 10 20 50 years and then something happens and it and it's still in your in your memory <laughs> memory cells and yet you get triggered again instantly and it's, it's almost, an instant reaction that's what we're has, referring to trigger it has almost nothing to do with that present no it has to do with the past which is so it fast. made you feel so, yeah it made you feel something from the past and you have, you're trying to protect yourself right now yes, that's kind of exactly. what is going on so one of mine i realized one of my triggers and it's like if you, if you want to see shannon get mad really really quickly ignore me like being ignored, especially by my family, is like the fastest trigger on the planet. And I feel like I have no control over it. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm a little slightly more mature, only slightly. And I can start to see it a little bit more farther in advance, but I, it doesn't mean I don't get upset. Um, so Your it's a reaction is really... different. Slightly. Slightly. <laughs> But I, let's, I want to point this out, I, not point it out, I want to bring this to the, to the listeners. So you're saying about fear of um, being ignored. Yeah. Um, it's not even a fear. The experience for me of being ignored is an instant trigger. How common is that? Like to me, I'm hearing you. I feel it. I get it. I'm wondering how many of you listening, you resonate with this? Mm -hmm. um, because you're not the first ADHD entrepreneur to say this to me. Oh. Um, and I'm kind of coordinating because, you know, you're always ignored because either, you know, you're, you're, not, you're not following the status quo or some sort of upbringing. So I just wanted the listeners to kind of think about if that they resonate and makes sense to them and how we can yeah. do something about it. And, and maybe ADHD, at least from my casual research, is kind of inherited. 
like there's it's not yeah. unlikely it's not un, it's pretty highly likely one of your parents probably mm-hmm. had was ADD diagnosed or not and distractible people it's not hard to ignore others do you know what I mean <laughs> so. yeah well the, the other thing to go back on they do say it's inheritable but it could skip a their generation okay and has done that yeah so it is yeah. inheritable um but I think it's a bit of the what they call the rejection sensitivity dysphoria also so since we feel emotions a lot more every little like that's what the rsd rejection sensitivity dysphoria Mm -hmm. is any perceived slight yes any perceived perceived is always the key word perceived is it true is it factual we take it so personally we take it because they our brain just jumps in emotional mind takes over and it's immediate because we you know the prefrontal cortex is in there say well slow down tiger (laughs) right yeah, hundred so, percent. That's and that's and that, I'm not super familiar with that term. It totally resonates as you say it. Yeah. Um, it Most people, people who are, who are ADHD get it right when I when we say the term, and it's a relatively new construct by yeah. one uh, William Dob, Doctor William Dobson, and uh, but every ADHD person he works with is immediate. They know it. Yeah. Hundred percent. Oh my gosh, I can relate to people I know right now, as you say that particular term. And for me, the big one is perceived. Yeah. Perceived slight, no yeah. intentions. It's most sometimes it's not. For me, most times it isn't. But it's what I perceive it to be, and that's where I got to check the facts. And then by being and present, then we can kind of say, "Whoa." And the other thing about that, the going after the perceived thing, sometimes there's there's overt rejection Mm -hmm. right so someone's like no i don't want you here that's one but then there's also the just accidental i'm gonna say it someone Mm -hmm. was busy doing something else and we took it as rejection they were they were you know there was some other more important thing to them in that moment than maybe they're trying to rescue somebody had to run to the bathroom (laughs) exactly so there's like casual there's overt where it's clearly personal because or intentional that's what I was saying. Intentional. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. And then there's other times where it just happened, but we still took it so darn personally. Yeah. Um, and, it, and once you have a little bit of space from it and probably maturity and a little bit more prefrontal access to your prefrontal cortex, you can see that. But in the moment, you sure as heck do not. Well, I think it has to do with if you're more aware and present, you got to be present to catch it. And then like to me, you can have all the knowledge you have in the world about ADHD and all that, but that's just knowledge. And to me, awareness is you applying mm. knowledge because you got to be aware when to apply it. Awareness is applied knowledge. Yeah. I, someone, I remember someone told me, well, Nicole, she's the one I interviewed me on the first one in the 101 episode. She came to me one day and said, you know how knowledge is king? And I said, no, I don't agree. And it took me two weeks to explain why, but it was because awareness is king or queen or key because yeah. you apply the knowledge i know a lot of people especially engineers they know everything that's great you know the facts you know everything but you can't apply it because they're not aware of when to apply it so i want to i want to talk for a second about this point because i think it's the kind of antidote to the rejection is is self awareness and it ties into what we were talking about last time mm-hmm. self acceptance the more grounded i am in who i am as a human being in terms of my contribution in terms of my all the dozens of profiles I've done so I can actually name my strengths. Yep. I can articulate them. I can place myself in situations that will take best advantage of them so I can get used up in a good way. Um, and the, the more I'm, I'm less subject to that, those triggers because I'm, I know who I am. And if, if someone doesn't like it, and also getting older is a great thing for this. Cause if you don't like me after a certain, after 40, the expression is, if you don't like me, that's your problem, <laughs> <laughs> which I always really loved. And I'm way past that at this point. Um, and it's, you kind of just stop worrying about what other people think because you have your own strongly developed sense of self. And I'm not talking about self ego. I'm talking about who you are as a, as a contributing, make a difference type of person. Where you and bring the value to the world. Now, like, just to go, I want to go on this, but I think it's a very good observation because I think what you're also referring to is you've actually identified your natural talents and strengths. Mm -hmm. You've accepted it, even though many people have never accepted it and told you it was not the way to do things. 
So once you get validated and you're validating yourself, now you got more self-acceptance. Mm -hmm. And then that's why you will no longer be concerned about whether people say more comfortable, right? So when you said you start talking about self-acceptance and I just finished off self-acceptance is key to self-validation. Yes, 100%. And, and self, like to know thyself, which is a, a motto I live by. And I also try and push it on everyone else I know because I want them to know themselves as well. Mm -hmm. And I think last time um, we were chatting, I said, you know, my, my one rule is I trust people to the degree that I think they know themselves. Mm -hmm. if, if someone's clueless about themselves, then I'm clueless about them too, because because they don't know. Um, but when someone is is self aware, I know I can <clears throat> I can trust them. Now sometimes I can trust them to do the right thing. They say I'm not good for you. I believe them. <laughs> so mm -hmm. there's that part too. But I think that's so critical to solving if it's a problem to solve this issue of feeling rejected. Because and I know there's situations where I will look like a complete and total failure, because. It, it, it's not, I'm not suited for that set of circumstances. I'm okay with that because I know that there are other situations where I am the complete opposite of a failure. Right. Yeah. Right. Radical acceptance to a certain degree, but yeah, it's, my not, mantra, it's not radical acceptance of anything bad. It's radical no. acceptance that I am useful here and not useful there. Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the other thing too, is what I, no, I forgot what I was going to say. All right. Um, you were saying, yes, anyways. Radical acceptance of, I said, be, where I'm really useful and where I'm not. Yeah, if that, if that. Um, right, okay. So what I was going to say with that is you've gone and identified your strengths and you got comfortable with it and validated yourself or it got validated that the way you were doing things is proper, how you do things. And at the same time, you have a better being and acceptance of yourself. So you can have your being mind, your doing mind now work together to be a wise mind. Yeah. And I think that's very important for everyone to have a great clarity is get validated on your strengths, abilities, and your value, no matter what anyone else says. So you know it and you can bring it and try to spend as much time as you can in those areas. Mm -hmm. So you can be in a good blend of wise mind of your doing and your being. Mm -hmm. Because if you're less frustrated, I've really noticed the last couple of years, I'm really trying to get control of my time so I can do more things. And I'm actually able to be more present because I'm not as frustrated. Mm -hmm. The least amount of frustration means I can be more present. The more frustration, it's an emotional response. Mm -hmm. Right? Can I, I want <clears throat> pardon me, I want to add another element in here too that I was thinking about as we were getting ready for this podcast is that really high intelligence has an impact on this. Yes. Right. Because, you know, in terms of the reasonable mind, if you've got a, if you've got a lot of mental horsepower, as I've heard it described for the cool, rational and task focused mind, it's very easy to let it uh, run. govern. Yeah. Govern. That's a great word. Yeah. And and it can, it's very easy to be impatient with other people who, whose minds don't work as quickly. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it does mean sometimes it t tells you who you need to hang out with or not hang out with. Yes, but exactly. I think intelligence has a lot to do with it. And it's not something we normally talk about. I'm much, I tend to talk about more about, you know, the affect, which is your, mm -hmm. you know, what, what drives you emotionally or your, your cognitive, which is what drives your, your striving instincts. But I think intelligence also, plays a, ma a major factor in what I've seen. Intelligence, I just want to clarify to the listeners here, like for me, intelligence doesn't mean you're smarter or no more. It's mm -hmm. just your brain works at a higher, a, a higher speed. And you're able to pick up on things a little quicker. And the reason I'm stating that is because uh, my, my oldest daughter was identified gifted. So of course I researched a lot of crap about it because even that has a bunch of emotional disconnections at a young age and then I found out later that I was actually identified gifted as well so yes the intellect our brain goes a little quicker I don't have a lot of patience people just can't seem to pick it up and my daughter just started high school I guess who, what she's complaining about people who just can't pick it up so high intelligence will impact it because yes People just seem to process it more, but that's a lot more facts and knowledge that they're gaining. Mm -hmm. 
But me and you, we have a lot of intellectual conversations about the being mind, the doing mind, the emotional mind, the reasonable mind. Yeah, we do. Right. So it does get in the way. And I think that's just being aware that my rational mind is taken over with too many facts. And mm-hmm. to get into wise mind to apply it to being. I, ever since I saw this new diagram, it's just doing and being. To me, it was just phenomenal. It's just the next level of the reasonable emotional mind. It's just that extra layer of the next step. Um, and a lot of stuff that we do and we go to conferences together and talk about has a lot to do with this doing and being for mm-hmm. wise mind. Well, and I think you just gave a great clue because we're, you know, how do you apply this stuff? How do you put it into practice? So it's like when you notice that you're getting a little over focused, and I'm mostly talking to myself mm-hmm. as I'm saying this, is that is when I get really focused on the doing, I need to shift. In fact, I got some great coaching uh, from someone yesterday. It's like, Shan, you need to actually, since I've taken on a, a whole other huge project, it's like your intellect, I can tell you right now, my intellect is working high speed. I've got a lot more intellectually, it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. And it, challenging in a, in a good way, not in a completely overwhelming way, but my, I, I know my mental energy is going, being expended at a high degree. And she's like, Shannon, you have to stop. You have to, if you're going to take this on, you need to take time out for you. You need being time. She actually Self-care. used those, she yeah. used those words. I'm like, she goes, I go to a spa once a month. I'm like, that sounds like a lovely idea. I could really use a massage for it right now, <laughs> you know? And then when you get so much into the doing, or pardon me, into the being, you can actually get a little, I don't even know what the word is, but sometimes you need to bring in that doing like you, it needs to be out in the world. It needs to be proactive. You can't, it's not just sitting and meditating under a tree for 20 years. No, <laughs> right? no, no, it's true. Mountain. Because what you're talking about self care, which is another part of the DBT is you got to take care of yourself and do things that will separate you from work or from the challenges. Like any case, what we'll refer to as the reasonable mind, but the being mind is just self-care do something that's only for you that benefits you and it's okay and and i think you know there's a great model called polarity management um by dr barry johnson and he talks about the fact that there's some some things are problems to solve and other things are polarities to manage and this being and doing i just thought of this now andre being and doing is a polarity to manage and, and it's, it's, if you just think yeah. of a, a cross, like mm-hmm. it's, an, it's, a, it's an axis. So if, if you've got plus is at the top and minus is at the bottom and being is on one side and doing is on, is on the other. So if you do too much being, what are the downsides? Mm-hmm. If you do too much doing, what are the downsides? Exhausted, driven, grumpy, not communicating, you know, and then, then immediately we want to champion and go up to the opposite corner. Oh, like, oh, I need to go spend 20 days at a spa, Mm, Mm -hmm. probably not, probably two is good, right? And then, and then you go to the upside. But the point is, you want to actually stay on the upside of both being and doing, right? And you kind of want to do a figure eight infinity loop between the two, and not go down to the downside. So it's this, it's this flow, this dance between them. And then it's going to look like you're in wise mind. Well, I was just going to say it's definitely wise mind. Yeah scenario as long as you don't go down to the downside it's 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 amazing so it's being aware it's being sensitive it's having that body awareness mm-hmm. we were talking about and i'm talking myself through this as, as i'm explaining it but just like okay when i'm getting a little too focused on being time to move to doing when i'm getting a little too focused on doing time to move to being and then you'll have this really elegant flow and people you'll experience yourself and other people will experience you as being in wise mind yeah, and it's also That's finding me. a middle path between the two extremes. Mm-hmm. And the two extremes is when you start to experience the negative aspect of each of those. Love this. Yeah. This is a, these are good insights. Well, I don't know. Usually, I like to summarize three, but there's too much here, so I'm going to just repeat point form here. That what you said, being a spiritual, be it Zen, Buddha, re- whatever religion, or just I've, another thing I, lo- I read it was like. Spiritual doesn't mean you believe in anything. It's just spiritual means being present. So that's also if someone says, you know, you got to be more spiritual. To me, I'm taking it more. It's just being me, Mm -hmm. being now. Um, You don't need to know the whole path to achieve it. I thought that was a great insight from you. Um, Being present is difficult. It's not easy. No matter if they've been practicing for 40 years, it's still difficult. Especially with a busy mind. With a busy mind, it's really hard to like tell it to shut up for a while. I would love to. (laughs) 
Um, and self-acceptance is key to self-validation. And what were you, did you have a key takeaway from the last couple of chats we've had here? Well, I think I've, I think that putting it into practice, like, like yeah. awareness is applied knowledge for me is one of my takeaways. And then applying the fact that being and doing is, is not a problem to solve. It's, it is a polarity to manage and to be aware of how we stay on the, on the plus side uh is is how we stay actually in wise mind and then the other yeah. thing for me is an intelligence in a busy fast mind um i'm not gonna say it's an extra challenge but it kind of is um the, it doesn't the mean challenge is keeping the balance yes yes exactly so those are some of my takeaways all right and then just based on what you just said there i want the listeners to understand here when we talk about the middle path it doesn't mean it's 50 percent in the middle depending on the situation, the middle path could be more on the reasonable doing mind and sometimes mm-hmm. more on the emotional being mind. So the middle path is all dependent on the situation. Right. And that's, we need to, that's what I call a balance. And we need to quite, it's, it's, it's a skill to learn. It, it is. And it's, it's, it's actually having the model to hold it mm-hmm. means that you have fluidity between it. It's when you get polarized and stuck on one side and then you lose the picture you lose the big picture you can't see it um so i think the thing what i'm getting is this is the bigger context of how how humans work and how we can have elegance and fluidity with this process is to be aware of of the the venn diagram a reasonable um versus emotion mind or or being and doing and then once we're aware of that we can we can we can be accomplished in in flowing between them well and I think you just completely described DBT to an extreme black and white thinking, polarized thinking, getting I the balance you. and flow in between. Fantastic. Now, <laughs> the listener, these last two episodes, it is okay to be emotional and to be rational. Once you're aware, you're in either mind, you can move into a wise mind and then you can share your wisdom with everyone. You can't always be in a wise mind. It's just all of a sudden being aware. I'm being a little too emotional. I'm being too reasonable. What do I need to bring it back? Because it's not being effective, which is another big DBT word that I'm really learning. Sometimes it's better to be effective than right. That hurt, that hit, that hit hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> but for the listener, I ask you, where do you find yourself mainly? In wise mind, rational mind, or emotional mind? Do you struggle with doing and being? I want to know, send me an email at andre at andreb.ca. And I want to hear from all of you. So I really want, because I think this is a fantastic construct to get an idea. Um, I'm going to get special permission so I can put this in the show notes here from uh, the DBT course I'm taking. And there's no other person that we could have had a great context and learning than with you, Shannon. So thank you very much. Thank you. I love it. This is so much fun, Andre. I love it. And uh, we'll do it again. So thank you for listening. We'll talk to you soon.